All right. All right. What's up, everyone? Big episode. We got Squealy Dowling. Neil, how are we doing tonight? Not bad, brother. How are you doing? Great, man. Great. So we're going to do a power hour. We're going to talk all sports. Neil, uh, what, what, you're a Bears fan, correct? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. I- so, first off, I want to ask a question. What do you think they should do at quarterbacks, first off? Uh, get rid of Mr. Biscuit as fast as possible. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you're a Bears fan and you know it, we're just going to – this is what's going to happen because I know what you're leading into. So, we might as well <laughs> – all right. We're not going to get him. He's just going to dangle the fruit in front of our face the whole time. Yeah. And everyone hopes up. And we're going to burn and crash and probably get rid of picks and whatever and then end up not getting them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I so. think so. I think that's definitely what's going to happen. Uh, yeah, honestly, like, if I was a Bears fan, if I was a Bears fan, I would want the Bears to suck this year. Everyone gets fired. You get a good draft pick and then go from there. Well, Matt Nagy, I don't know what he calls. I don't think he has something in the playbook that can go past a pass for five more than five yards. Yeah, unless it's to Cordero Patterson. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was – my brother was saying that, too. He's like, we should tank last year. I was like, well, we started off, what, 3-1 and one last year yeah. beating Tampa? Yeah. Unreal, dude. So, it's a frustrating – I mean – It is wild. They beat Tampa Bay. Like, that's fucking insane. Yeah. And I was like – that D, our defense that game was like, holy shit, unstoppable. Like, we're going to the playoffs easily winning every game. From well, it kind of was like uh, the defense when they went 12 and four or whatever and won the division. It was like, damn, they're back. Like, oh, you're going to bring up that on me? Yeah. And then the double doink. But uh, I yeah, mean, I'm a- funny, funny story, real quick about the double doink. So, Cody Parker, go plays for the Browns. Yeah. And like, I, I, we have betting in Indiana. I use BetMGM. Shout out BetMGM, sponsor me, whatever you want to do. Um, uh, so, the Browns. I had all I had to do is I had this insane parlay going on, and all they had to do is just uh, cover the spread. I forgot what the spread was, but it came down to Cody Parker kicking an extra point, and he, and he missed. Uh, I was like, I'm haunted by Cody Parker for the rest of my life. I mean, he's not even on the Bears anymore, and he still fucking somehow messes up. Every, I still have not, bro. But I'm a Steelers fan, and like, bro, they restructured, structured restructured Big Ben's contract, but, like, oh, dude, he's so bad. Like, it's just tough to watch. Like, I haven't really – I saw something on NFL on my Instagram, but what was the contract about? Anything? Well, like, so he was technically owed, like, $23 million this upcoming year. Yeah. And now he's making, like, thirteen. So, like, mm-hmm. he just opened up more cap space. But, like, dude, like, he can't throw the ball. He can't move. He gets injured anytime his, like, arm hits a helmet. It's, like, it's just. Boot on midseason. Yeah, like- yeah, exactly. Like, the boot is going to appear three more times. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's it's just kind of one of the. What's up? Go ahead. I just kind of. You- there you go. You go. You go. As a Steelers fan, were you frustrated? Like, would you rather lost some games earlier? And then, like, basically die at the end of the year. Like, what? Um, like it was, it was tough because, like, one thing that happened is, like, they did their playoff game. Like, their defense was down four starters in what started game one of the year. So, like, mm-hmm. like they were missing Bud Dupree, Devin Bush, who are two like absolute studs. And uh, and then, like, on top of that, like. Yeah, like, I wish their offense would have got exposed more because I think if their offensive coordinator would have been fired, like, mid-season, I would have had way more confidence in him. And he did get fired at the end of the year, but he was, like, he is so bad. Like, honestly, like, he is so bad. So, like, I wish he would have looked horrible to begin the year and then they would have fired him mid-season. But, like, it's tough to say because, like, their defense was – I mean, it was the number one defense when fully healthy. And, like, they are missing their middle linebacker, missing Bud Dupree, missing – you know, Tewitt's out of a few games. Cam Hayward's out of a few games. Uh, I think there's safety, like, towards ACL, too. Like, they just had bad injury bug where it was, like – I mean, it's tough because their defense was that good. So, like, I don't know. But, yeah, I guess, like, I would have rather – like, they slowly just died each week more and more in the end of the year. But, like, the game that they looked the best in to end the year was when they sat everyone and played the Browns and lost. Yeah, the Browns is the Browns, though. Yeah, like they – and then the Browns come back – like they played the Browns tougher a week where they sat all four captains and I think three other starters. And Mason Rudolph, we all know sucks, played. They looked better mm-hmm. that game. 
than they did when they played in the playoffs and actually prepared. It was like, what are we doing here? I mean, they had bad luck. I mean, with that fumble over the head. Yeah. Of, come on, like you're not gonna you're not gonna come back from a game. <laughs> any team you are is like, you could be the worst team in the league. You start was the seventeen zero or fourteen zero to start it. I think it was twenty four to zero. Yeah, I mean anyone. I mean, I I don't I I find it hard the Chiefs, the Chiefs could do it. Like they have firepower ever, but that's just tough in the NFL. But uh, I was actually talking to a couple of Brown or uh, Steelers fans. They're they like seem frustrated with uh, um, Juju Smith Senior. Oh yeah, bro. I think he's so annoying. Like I but just like do you like hate his? Do you hate because he like was too cocky this year? Or I mean, I just so here's my he got, thing. He got little boy at the end of the season. Yeah, here's my thing. Is like when they're winning, like okay, do whatever you want. But first off, Juju did not have that good of a year anyway. So, like, I don't know why he was, like, really talking like crazy. But if they win, Juju, you can go do your TikTok dances. You can go do whatever you want. When you start to lose and he then gets, like, almost more cockier and then he says more stuff and he does more TikTok dances, that's when it's like, bro, chill out. And then Tomlin talks to him and he's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to stop the TikTok dances. Then he goes in the media before they beat the Browns. He's like, I don't know why we're worried. It's the same old Browns. There's no way they can beat us. It's like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Living in Cleveland, like, if, like, anyone plays on a football team, like, that Cleveland Browns football is, like, so blue-collar. It's so, like, when you're with Browns fans, like, you're one big family. It's unbelievable. And they just kind of, like, rally together and really just, like, balled out, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was honestly we'll hoping, I was hoping they were going to beat the Chiefs, but well, they had that controversial call, which I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm just still shocked that Pat Mahomes got taken out of that game and they still won that game. So, yeah, and they they went for it on that fourth down and everything. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. But I love Claypool. Game. Who like is Claypool? Oh, he's a beast. I love his game, but did he? That's his. This is his rookie season, right? Yeah. I mean, he got pretty cocky at the end of the uh, end of the season, and I think I don't know if he kind of um, just kind of lost passion. I'm not passion, but like motivation to keep on working hard. Like he got baby too. I think he. I think he hung out with Juju way too much, to be honest. Like I think he hung out with Juju way too much. So. Sorry for the notifications, fans. I'm on my phone right now, so. <laughs> no, you're good. But, yeah, it was – I think he – I think he just hung out with Juju too much. He was doing too many things that Juju was doing. He started getting on TikTok too. And, like like I said, bro, like it's, it's like one thing, like, if you win, but it seemed like they upped the TikToking and doing all that, like, the more they lost, which is like, I, I don't get that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, do it when you win, like. They became villains, and they, they became not, like, bounties, but people wanted a piece of uh, Claypool and uh, Juju. Like, they oh. wanted to make, make them know that they were here. The Bills game, that's all Chris Collinsworth talked about, was, like, he he was like, yeah, the Bills know that. Like, they already came out and said, if Juju tries to dance, we're going to be pissed off, and Juju danced, and they were pissed off. Like, it's just – I don't know, man. I, I, I hope it's – you know, if – Juju comes back. Like, I hope he does, like, take this as, like, to stop talking and to, like, prove yourself. Like, like for once, like, Antonio Brown shut the hell up and just played football, and he played really well for the Buccaneers. And, like, you know, he, he had his whole spat and everything, and he went at Juju, and Juju – I don't know, maybe Juju took too much from Antonio Brown, but it, I thought for a little bit he did it, but it seemed like he took all of his bad qualities. Because, like, when Antonio Brown sh just shuts up, stays out of the media, and puts his head down and works hard, like – the dude's a fucking insane receiver. Could could you imagine, unfortunately, Antonio Brown, like, he could have been this guy when he was with the Raiders. That's all John Gruden wanted him to do is just mm -hmm. shut up and just keep keep your nose clean and just be a football player. Not – I'm saying just be a football player. But like, I understand Juju was going through some stuff, but, you know, like, mm -hmm. well, and you're the best wide receiver in, in the, the league. But also, like, in John Gruden, like, he if he has a receiver like getting open working well like dude he feeds that guy a lot like Antonio Brown could have had like literally seven to eight two hundred yard games. Oh yeah. So. I heard a good story. I think it was um, 
Antonio Brown needs like three more catches. I don't know if you guys already talked about this, but like he needed three more catches in the regular season. Mm-hmm. And he, like Tom Brady knew that. So he designed plays like a little dump here, like three late plays in a row to get him like his bonus in his contract. So I thought yep. Tom Brady did vouch for him. I mean, Tom Brady played with him for one game in uh, New England. So he knows like what he can, he's like capable of that. That just shows what kind of leader Tom Brady is. And like he'll get, he'll, he'll help you out if you help him out, you know? Yeah. Russell Wilson did the same thing too. He, he, uh, they were winning – I can't remember who they were playing week 16, but a receiver just like that needed one more catch, not even yards. So he – instead of calling a run play, he called a screen pass to this receiver, so he got his bonus. And and I love that because you know how many times owners, like, sit people so they don't hit their bonus? Like, it's, I think it happens in baseball the most where they'll be like, ah, you're not going to pitch. We suck. And then it's like, well, yeah, this guy needed three more strikeouts and he was going to make another $200,000. So, are you uh are you fully Pittsburgh guy? Or are you Pirates no, guy? No, 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 no. So I'm I'm literally I don't really follow baseball. My dad likes the White Sox, so like if that's who I like, kind of I don't follow at all. I like the Steelers, I like the Blackhawks, and then um, basketball. I'm just honestly a LeBron fan. Yeah, I mean, like- jump whatever you want to jump in, but uh. Man, the Blackhawks. I, I don't – I became a hockey fan probably last year, and I was just more of a hockey guy. Like, I have, yeah. one, I have one channel on my TV. It's the NHL Network. And I I thought the Blackhawks, from listening listen to everyone, that they were going to have a dead year. Like, oh, Pat, same. Patrick Kane is insane. Showtime, Kaner, just absolute the man. Greatest American-born hockey player. Yeah, 400th goal. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Whatever's going on with uh, Taze, like – if it's mono or uh, some reports are saying depression, like hopefully it gets through it because like, if you, that's just another bullet in the chamber ready to go. Oh dude. If he could somehow like, obviously his health is the number one priority. He's got to figure that shit out. But like, if he could somehow come back, like they're fucking rolling right now. And I was listening to uh red line radio and chief was like, he was talking about how like, uh, who was it? It was like Michael Jordan. It was uh, in the Jordan doc. They were like, you know, it got to a point where like, Jordan might not have been the best on that night uh, out of everyone, but he's like, he got to a point where he was so dominant that like he knew exactly what he had to do for the team to win. And he's like, that's how I feel Patrick Kane is playing now where it's like, he doesn't have to be the best player on the floor or the ice, but he knows exactly what the Blackhawks need to do to win. And also he is like maybe the best on the ice every night, but like, it's just like, I feel like they're, they're in a groove. Like I think if they can get back Taze, like no one's going to say no to one of the greatest ever too. like Taze is so good. Yeah, I mean, and, he, and Patrick Kane is playing insane minutes right now, dude. Yeah. And he's passing the puck, saucer and puck, t- tape to tape. You know, first of all, that spinorama goal, did you get to check that one out? Where yeah, that was sick. Oh, my God. But you got a couple of rookies or a couple of newer players that are just unreal stepping up as a team. I think they could – I think they're going to sneak in the playoffs and they're going to be a hard team to beat. Right now, they're they're sitting pretty solid in the playoff picture, which is, like, perfect. Like, I hope they make the playoffs, and I hope they have, like, a higher seed. Like, I will say, like, so I've been to – wow, this is terrible. I can't remember. I've been to one for sure Stanley Cup games. And, like, dude, Blackhawks games are just so fun. I know fans can't go, but, like, that's, like, one of the ones – like, dude, everyone in Chicago loves Chicago, the Blackhawks, like – it's mm-hmm. awesome when they're good. Like, it's great. Like, I want Blackhawks to do well. I want the playoff game to matter. Like, last year, you know, they expanded the playoffs, and you knew they were going to get killed by Vegas in round yeah. two. So, it was like, yeah, okay, fun to win one, and then, all right, season's over. Like, this year, though, I feel like it's like, you know, Tampa Bay is insane. And, like, the they're Maple- pro- hard. Who's going to beat the Maple Leafs, dude? Yeah, the only thing is, like, they're only playing Canadian teams. Yeah. So, are they going to do, like, a two-week stretch, or are they just going to go – Season in Canada, season in the U.S., and then playoffs they mix? I think. Like, I think I think then, like, the can – I don't know how they're – like, I don't know if the NHL is going to do a bubble or there's hoping by then Canada will let them come in so they can do home and homes. But, like, I mean, that really would, like – if they don't do a bubble and, like, Toronto doesn't really play a home game, like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they could do a – it would be a neutral site, but it's not really a home game. So, like, that would suck, but – I don't know if they're hoping that just like by that time Canada will give them the okay to be able to travel in in the border and whatnot. 
do you follow like any uh, Canadian teams? Like I have a, I like the Hawks. I wouldn't like, I don't have like a favorite team like Vegas. I was like, I like them because they're a newer team and Vegas is awesome. But so the Calgary Flames was like my team that I was like, ready. they begin season I bet them on all time and okay. bet the Blackhawks every game. So like the script flipped, like I thought the, the Calgary Flames, I thought they were going to make it deep in the, the playoffs for the cup. But yeah. that's so bad right now. They fired their coach and it's just, I, I don't know what's going on over there. It's just that they have no spark. A shit show right now. It's unbelievable, man. Yeah. So, yeah, that's – yeah, we don't talk hockey, but I do like hockey. No one else really watches hockey that's on here, so. I'll talk hockey any day of the week. That's, yeah. Like, I have it playing right now. Like, that's yeah. the only thing I bet on. Yeah, hockey – hockey is fun to bet on, honestly. It is really fun. To, it's, it's, it's fun to watch after – like, especially while you're betting it because it's just like – like soccer, you know, you it, it's the same scores as soccer, but there's so much going on at mm-hmm. every point of the game, which is so, like, fun to watch. Um with you with like you said you've been the black i've never been to the blackhawks game but i've been to a couple of columbus games dude electric atmosphere it's like i've been to shouts on the same uh 2016 playoffs like baseball atmosphere is unbelievable during the playoffs but like it goes toe-to-toe regular season hockey versus yeah. baseball. Dude, it's yeah. insane and I'll say, uh blackhawks probably have like the best home field advantage hockey so I mean, think of that, the cup, like, it, it's awesome. But Starts with the, they don't even let that guy finish the anthem. Yeah, I know, I know. You cheer the whole time. It's uh, insane. It's it's one of the coolest things is is uh, when they cheer during the anthem. It's so awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. But moving on, let's talk about this. J.J. Watt goes to the Cardinals. Um, was wild because, like, no one had him. Like, it was, like, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Green Bay, I, I don't know, maybe a fifth team, but Arizona wasn't on there at all. Yeah, so um, I thought Green Bay for sure, Wisconsin guy yeah. uh, was going to be just a dominant Aaron Rodgers pulling him to the side saying, hey, come to Green Bay. And I also thought he was going to go to Steelers, like the, the brothers, the first time, you know? See, when he signed, though, and they came out with his deal, it, I like I, I didn't think he was going to go to the Steelers just because like, I didn't think he was going to take a pay cut. And he was going to have to take a huge pay cut to go to the Steelers. And especially when he signed and that deal came out, like it was evident, like there's no chance he was going to take yeah. a cut. So, like, it makes sense. But I did think Green Bay, too. I also thought Cleveland, because Cleveland had a decent amount of money to give him. So, I, I was like, him and Miles Garrett, like Cleveland's good. Cleveland's defense is good. I thought he might go there. Like, Arizona, it, I don't know. Like, he, So, um, what's his name? The wide receiver, best in the league uh, for the Cardinals. Hopkins. Yeah, do you think he was chirping in his ear saying it's oh, not bad? Oh, yeah. We got yeah. some, you know. I bet him and Larry Fitzgerald mm-hmm. called him. And then J.J. Watt, I don't know. It, it kind of seems like – so he was like – or I don't know. It seemed like he loved Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. And, like, it kind of seems like he was like, well, fuck, like, I need to get out of here. Deshaun needs to get out of here. But let's just go play with, like, kind of a, someone who plays like Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray. Doesn't his wife – is she a soccer player? Yeah, she plays in, in the – Yes. She so the- that I heard rumors about that was like he wants to, you know, figure that out. But so I that's mean- why, like, he would be in Chicago a lot, and it would just be like people would like look way into it, and then it would just be like, dude, his wife plays in Chicago, and he's in his off season, and she's in season. That's why he's there. Like, I bet it was on his mind, but the Bears being the Bears, and just like probably were like, oh, JJ, what well, will never happen? He probably actually was considering if he had the opportunity. I don't think the Bears had money, though, but I do think if the Bears had money and, like, called him, I do think he would have listened. I think, like, whatever – like, I guess a lot of the teams were going to give him some money, but, like, Arizona gave him, like, 80% guaranteed, which is, like, tough to turn yeah. down. And, I, I, dude, it, like, go get your money. Everyone's like, chase a ring, chase a ring. Like, dude, go get your money. Like, What was the salary like in uh, Houston? I think he was making, like, 18, and now he's making, like, 15. Yeah. Let's say but, you're at that point. You know, but 18 is like, I think it was the highest paid DN, if I'm not mistaken. So, like, either him or Von Miller were the highest paid. So, like, he's still around one of the highest paid in the league. Um, but he did, <laughs> he, so 99 is retired with the Cardinals, and uh, a World War II veteran is mm-hmm. who holds it. So, he had to call his daughter and ask, and she gave him permission to wear it. So, does JJ not support the troops? 
Yeah, I, I don't know if he does or doesn't. <laughs> I get it. It's a brand and then you, that whole side of non-football stuff. But for him to actually reach out and call the daughter and, you know, I think they're going to make a, a big deal out of it, which they should about, you know, mm-hmm. he probably yeah, represent the guy who wore it. With, oh, yeah, I'm sure he'll do something to, like, dedicate for sure. Yeah, you think Tom Brady would have took number 11 if he went to Tampa Bay if he was re- retired? Fuck no. Hell no. He'd be 12, bro. The greatest of all time. Yeah, he, Tom, Tom Brady, no chance. Like, And th- that's the thing, though, is, like, the guys like that who are, like, really well-respected, like a Russell Wilson, like a Tom Brady, like a J.J. Watt, like, odds are they're probably going to get that number regardless. Like, Carson Wentz walking into Indy, acting like he wants 12, it's like, or 11, whatever, whatever he is, like, Nah, man, you got to prove yourself for a year. Like, <laughs> numbers are coming. Uh, you think he's gonna do well? I mean, the Colts organization as a whole, they might not have the best team, but the, the organization is probably the best in the league. You'll have Pat back if he talk about it all the time. But it's just yeah. such a structured organization, yeah. They're ran very well, and I think Frank Wright is a very good coach. Um, it'll be interesting because, like. So he was very, very good with Frank Wright in Philly. So, but like, I mean, he also played two years without him and wasn't the best. So did that like kind of like put a put a stamp on his career? Not his whole career, but like, you know, it could affect how you play going forward or affect how you play. Like you might, you know, Frank Wright could break him out of it, but I don't I wouldn't be shocked if he struggled like the first few weeks because like he was just getting he's just getting back into it, you're just getting used to it. But also like I think he will do well. I think Indy is like a very – like, first off, their line is insane. Yeah. He was getting yeah. hit I either first or second most this past year out of any quarterback. So, like, he won't have to deal with that, which is probably a huge relief. And then he's not going to have, like, a bunch of guys that they sign off the practice squad playing wide receiver one every week. Like, that happened, seemed to happen every week in Philly. And it's not like – like you said, though, like – the organization as a whole seems to be on the same page, which in Philly, we all know that was never the case. So maybe just comfortability will help him too. Like he was the number one pick for a reason. So yeah, he won MVP when he got hurt, went to Super Bowl, right? He, was that the year he got runner up or something? Yeah, I think he was runner up, but he, I mean, he had insane stats. Like, but I felt like, uh, I, I don't know if necessarily he did this or not, but, uh, I got kind of like he kind of quit on his team vibes in Philly. Yeah, see, I agree. But I also heard that, like, him and Doug Peterson's relationship was so bad that they went the last eight weeks with football without talking one, like, other than literally calling plays. So, like, yeah. it I, 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 it probably had a lot to do with both of them. Like, instead of just putting their egos aside and trying to win football games, they probably just, like, didn't let it go. And then, you know what I mean? It affects the whole damn team at that point. So, like, yeah. I bet, I, because, like, it seemed like Doug Peterson, like, the whole last game thing when Doug Peterson put in, uh, who's that kid from IU? He took uh, Jalen Hurts out when it was like a one score game. So, yeah. like, Nate Sudfield. So, it's like, I don't know. I, f- I just feel like Doug Peterson has, like, his way of coaching. And I think he's a very arrogant guy. And I do think he thought that he was wrongly done because like people forget like he did just win a super bowl not that yeah. long ago and like people turn on him like that the next year he did go to the playoffs like he fought for the playoffs the last two years or maybe not last year but this year i mean they literally like until the last week and had a chance technically to go to the playoffs so like i don't know like i, I do think he was probably pissed off about that so he's like i'm gonna just put my foot down if i get fired i get fired because me and the organization are not good I think Carson Wentz was kind of the same way where he's like, I don't see our organization going necessarily a great step. I was pissed when we drafted a quarterback at round two. So I'm going to just be stubborn too. And they were both just stubborn. And then, I mean, that definitely comes off selfishly to the team. But I mean, I hate the Packers, but look what Aaron Rodgers does when, when they drafted a quarterback. Oh, you know? yeah, no, I agree. I agree. This, so that's two different stories. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, if you, he, that field is fire. This is my job until I die or get yeah. traded. So I, that was pretty cool. Um, I think they're – I'd see, but that's like – I think kind of the Eagles are like, I hope that's what we get, a fire under Carson. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's not built like Rodgers. 
I mean, no, I mean, no, one not a lot of pe- no, not a lot of people are, but I do think to your point of that, like, I do think, like, I think if Jalen Hurts starts for two years and they draft the quarterback second round, I think he's going to get a fire lit under his ass. Like, I think a majority of quarterbacks would, I think Carson Wentz is really fragile right now. Like, yeah, I think it's kind of, he's on a roller coaster right now. I think the best move won the Bears did, and I think the best move that happened to him, if you went to the Bears with Matt Nagy, I think Matt Nagy's more of a drama coach and gets involved with stuff that's, you know, that a head coach should, should have. And I think that would just have been a terrible situation for both parties, the Bears. Oh, with, yeah. I think, would ruin, I think it would ruin his career if he went there. I agree with that. Like, I think, yeah, I, I, I think it was one of those things where it was like, dude, he's almost got to go to, like, a McVay or his old Frank Wright, who kind of made his career in a sense, or his best years were when he was his coordinator. Like he had, there was only a certain places that I think he could go. And I agree with you. I think if he would have went to the bears, the bears would have probably given up draft picks and stuff, which would have been pointless. Him and Nagy would have not gotten along. I yeah. mean, Nagy called out Mitch in, I mean, love or hate Mitch, Mitch, you know, not the best, but like you don't call your quarterback who is yeah. fragile like that out in the media and he did it multiple times. So it's like, it's like you think, you think Carson Wentz is going to handle that? He he folded when they drafted a second round quarterback. So he's not going to handle the media like that, especially if they're playing bad. So I agree with you 100 percent right there. Oh, the the Kahuna's on McVay saying I'll do anything, anything oh. to win football games. That's that's what I got out of it. And I think uh, his the boy that got traded. I forget. Excuse me. What's his name? It's on Golf. Golf. Jared Goff was a great quarterback. He's an above average quarterback, which he the Detroit has uh, a future now. You know they do. They do. I think it was a very good trade for both of them. But you know who you kind of reminded me of in the, all of this because golf did just sign an extension like last year. Yeah. Uh, it was. It reminded me of like a Belichick. Like, you know, what? I don't care who you are. Yep. Yep. And the thing about Belichick, and I don't know if McVeigh has this yet. Belichick, like every every year they do, they do the right thing. Like at the time, getting rid of they didn't spend their money on or they invested time in Antonio Brown. They got rid of him. Yep. That's the I mean a McVeigh and a Belichick, not just saying better coaches. They're both great coaches, but Belichick is really good at playing chess. Like, you'll hear it all the time. People are playing checkers, he's playing chess. And I think how, he's how many ahead. how many times do you see like a guy go off for the Patriots and then next three weeks they get cut and then you really yeah. don't see him in the league the rest of the time? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think you see that almost every year. Right. Honestly. We don't see, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, it might not. But, like, I mean, Jonas Gray, in a Notre Dame guy, he, they played the Colts on a Sunday night football game. He rushed for, like, 275 yards and three touchdowns. He was late to a meeting on Tuesday. He got cut that week. He yeah. only played for, like, another year in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, you got a good point there, Mike. So, I think, you know, like – but I do think, like, yeah, I, I, obviously Belichick is light years ahead of McVay. I mean, he has championships, all that stuff, and he, he knows that thing. And McVay's a very young coach, so, like, that's something you have to definitely – develop like that's tough to develop but like mm-hmm. that that trade like you said like that's what kind of it remind me of like a belichick esque so going off of a, a young coaches uh matt lafour not going on it with the mvp quarterback let alone aaron Rodgers, just cowered out and kicked a field goal i mean come on fourth I, and six. i but the thing is is like in that situation what it is worse to kick a – like, if, if you don't get that fourth down, it's first and ten on the five-yard line, and you get better field position if you punt anyways. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, it's like regardless, you're probably setting your defense up better if you uh, punt or don't punt any, or kick a field goal anyways. Secondly, like you said, you have Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, and I, I hate Aaron Rodgers. If I was Aaron Rodgers, I would just be like, no, get out. I'm not, I'm not coming I, off the field. I, yeah, but I think you saw a lot of frustration in that interview. Packers fans were crying and shit, mm-hmm. like the last game of Aaron Rodgers, you know? Mm-hmm. No, I definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think – see, that's the thing. That, that's like – that's like, uh, you know, I think McVay goes for that. Yeah. I mean, to finish off in the NFL talk, I mean, king is king. I, I'm, I'll never bet against Brady until he retires, but yeah. the Chiefs – I don't know, Mike. I honestly, uh, the Bears, I'm so lost as a fan. I don't see the end of the tunnel or light in the tunnel. I'm just sitting here confused. I don't see moves. I don't see people get paid like AR. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a frustrating time because this team, 
has a lot of talent and wasn't supposed to make it to the playoffs, makes it to the playoffs. So we get screwed for picks now. So I don't, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's literally the worst spot you can be at in professional sports is like, you're not that young. You don't have much cap space and you are literally on the edge of making the playoffs. It's the worst spot. And like if your team was have, super young, either. huh? You don't have a quarterback either. Yeah, you don't have a quarterback. Like, if it was Mitch's first year and he looked good, you just barely made the playoffs, you had, like, a young offense, pretty good defense that's going to be there for a little bit, you'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm pumped. Mitch looked good. Our offense is young. We'll be better. We're making the playoffs this year, and we can build on that. But, like, that's the total opposite. It's like Nagy's on his way out probably. Ryan Pace is on his way out probably. Like, it's almost like you're tanking, but yet still, like, not actually tanking. Yeah. We're putting uh, Band-Aids on a bolt hold. Like, it's not. <laughs> Evil, but we're still gonna be there forever, dude. Exactly. So it, it's frustrating. I mean, um, to finalize Bears, Akeem Hicks is the most frustrating player. He jumps off sides and runs his mouth, and it, it. I don't know. I don't know, Mike. It's just I want, like that's my time. That's my time to be a, the best fan that I can. It's just the Chicago Bears every Sunday, religiously since whatever. It's just so frustrating. I don't see anything in the future or getting things done. So it's just this Russell Wilson thing is just going to make me cry in the long run because <laughs> he's going to go somewhere and then just dominate us. Like whatever, you know? Yeah. Like uh Nagy, it, Matt Nagy, not the coach, the, the fellow podcaster on here. He's a big bears fan too. And like, I texted him and he, in, you know, he's, he's like, what he's a very optimistic fan. So like the whole time he's just like, no, let's make the playoffs. Fuck it. We might win. I'm just like, bro, no, you won't. But he's a very optimistic fan. And even him, I texted him like when it happened, I was like, dog, you guys might get Russell Wilson. He's just like, I'm not even getting my hopes up. He's like, I don't care. He's like, I'm not expecting it. Like, no, just no. Where, where, where are you at with Tom Brady and the Bucks? Can they run it back? Like, are you in the yeah. same boat? Like, I just recognize greatness like i'll never bet against tom brady i will never say he has not a chance like you know no i think i think where i'm at with him is like if you look at it he goes to a new team okay they have all he has all new receivers pretty young ones too i might add because you have gronk who's just coming back off of not playing they have no preseason nothing like that so the first Mm -hmm. eight weeks was kind of like their practice slash preseason yeah especially for a new team like that. And then what did we see the last, like, eight weeks and the playoffs? Dude, Tom Brady threw, like, 400 yards and four touchdowns, like, three times. And then we yep. saw in the playoffs. Yeah, he threw picks and whatnot. But, like, I think a lot of the times, like, Bruce Arians is just like, dude, I want you to take shots. Our offense is great. They also have a very good defense, so you're allowed to take those shots. And, yeah, yeah no, they can run it back easily. The only thing I will say is, like, the Chiefs, like, they won't – I mean, you don't know, but, like, if they have a healthy, healthy left tackle and right tackle, like – that changes a lot because their left tackle and right tackle are very good in football and in the whole NFL. But like, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. Like, how can you really say no? I mean, look at Mike Evans taking a pay cut just to keep the team together. That's and what you I'm got saying. playoff Lenny that, which was a Heisman winner that people are like, Oh, he's not that good. They won. He won a Heisman. He's built like a truck. And then you have Rob Gronkowski that was on pilot mode all year, yes. knowing Super Bowl and make two tutties. Like, mm-hmm. did you not see this coming? Like, the dude was just healing and just playing just to stay in shape all season. How funny was it? Like all of Brady's touchdown passes were like to Leonard Fournette, who he pushed the Bucks to sign mid season. He's like, we got to go get this guy. And then to Antonio Brown, who he also did the same thing in the Bucks. Like we're supposed to sign him, Didn't at first. And then Brady's like, no guys, we need to sign him, signs him. And then, like you said, Rob Gronkowski, who was his, you know, Batman and Robin up in new England, who, he was just like, I'm going to Tampa Bay. And Rob's like, all right, I'll come out of retirement. So you had Brady Belichick, greatest all time, put a jacket on one now. But you now you have Brady putting more input and, like, more conversations with the coaches. I think he has more leeway. Mm-hmm. Hey, I have a poll in this room. We're not going to – like, necessarily he had, like, talked to Belichick, not saying they're friends, buddy, but, but I don't think Belichick would, like, okay, Brady wants this, we'll get it. I think Pam Bay is like, if Brady jumps, I'm going to fuck him jump yeah you know? no I agree with that completely I also think that like I think McDaniel's up in New England like was kind of just like he tried to be too Belichick-y where mm-hmm. it's like like Belichick's a defensive guy yeah he holds his hands are on everything but like come on like if McDaniel's 
made a play call and Brady's like, no, let's do this. Like, is Belichick really going to overrule that? Like, I don't think he would. Like, I think he would just let the offense be the offense. I think yeah. McDaniel was trying to be like too much of a like, uh, but like, yeah, like you said though, like the, Tom Brady says run, they run. Tom Brady says stop, they stop. Like, I, I, it's just, it's just. So I mean, the way I put it, people had MJ. I was, I was born in '94, but this is my MJ, dude. To see a guy like a Tiger Woods that they change golf because of Tiger Woods. Hopefully, mm-hmm. he's doing well. Tom Brady in the NFL seven. Are you yeah. kidding me? And then I'm not a LeBron guy, but I recognize talent. Like LeBron James is one of the greatest of all time. Like. That's mm-hmm. it's so cool that we have all this going on in our generation, but I, I don't know. Patrick Kane, you're watching the greatest American born hockey player ever. <laughs> Showtime, baby. Yeah. So I heard dude just walking into the room, like, you know, Patrick Kane's in the room, but there's a buzz going on. Oh, yeah. He just seems like one of those cool guys where he's just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Fuck. Well, how do you jump in set subjects, but how do you feel about? The Big Ten won, but how bad Archie Miller is the head coach? How about that? Dude, it, it's, it is insane. He deserves to be fired. And when he got hired, I'm not even an IU basketball fan, but if you live in Indiana and, like, I use relevant to everyone. Like, it's just basketball. You hear about it. You see about it. I mean, everyone talks about it. You know a friend who went to IU or you know a friend who's a huge IU fan. One of the two. When they hired him, I'm just like, dude, this is Tom Crean 2.0. He kind of coaches the same, like energy, 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 all that kind of stuff. And like, but like, you're you're an IU fan, right? Basketball fan. Love IU, yeah. Yeah. So like, wouldn't you rather take Tom Crean years though, where at least you're making the tournament? Tom Crean, greatest recruiter ever. He got players. He's gonna never win the big game. Never gonna yeah. win the big. Game. That's that's the difference between Tom Crean and Archie Miller, the guy that looks like fucking big boy. You ever seen Big Boy? Yeah, that's what he fucking looks like. Like he's so bad in game, or I, I just think he yells the yell. But I mean, are you like you said? It's it's a it's a what do they call it? Blue blood states or yeah, uh, blue blood. Blue, yeah, they're blue blood. I basketball is the cream of the crop of Indiana. Like everyone watches the games. Everyone's an IU fan, unless some people in uh, South Bend want to be a, a mediocre or North Am fan. I'm not North Am. <laughs> Shouts out, Demetrius. Still love you, dog. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but IU, they should be like a, a top tier team every year. I mean, you got Duke, that's just weird, wonky season, blah, blah, blah. But it should be a top 10 team every year. Don't get me wrong. And what pissed me off most is when I watched Virginia, the kid that was Mr. Basketball, which oh, they, gosh. Indiana, every in, Mr. Basketball in Indiana goes to Indiana. I watched him stomp his dick around that national championship game and knowing we could have had him. Yep. Yep. I also think too, like the whole thing of like, to your point too, of like, so like everyone's nowadays is always like, oh, you got to give them three to four years. You got to give them three to four years. Dude, look at Illinois with Brad Underwood. Brad Underwood took one of the worst Big Ten programs over. And right now they're going to be a one seed. Yeah. Like, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Before I lose my train of thought, I mean, yeah, I, go I, ahead, I, go. Uh, so is it the G League allowing players not to go to school and they're going to start? Like, what's going on at the NBA? I'm not an NBA guy, but – this- So, it's – it's um, it's um you have to be, like, a considered – like, the NBA has to approve of you. So, you have to be, like, a top ten pick damn near. Okay. So, years from now, hear me out. Do you think college ba- – college basketball will be relevant, but if they start giving more leeway to these guys, you can start going to pros while you're so young – the G League's going to be the G League, and then you're going to have NCAA basketball. I don't think NCAA basketball is going to be the best competition. So would you rather watch the G League or whatever? Like, I don't know how, I don't know if you guys talk about this, but I'm not saying NCAA basketball is going to be irrelevant, but you're not going to have the best guys. So it's going to be just, just interesting. Like, okay, what if they would have had so-and-so that, in like a college player, he could have changed it. So I don't, I don't know. It's going to be, I think it's going to be like, I hate to say irrelevant, but we'll never know when the best guys are just going straight to pro. So what's going to happen, I think, is – so I think the G League is going to slowly open up more where it's not just those initial guys. And I think the G League is going to start generating a lot more money. I think guys, instead of going overseas, are just going to play in the G League and it's going to turn into, like, the baseball farm system. But instead of having my or small A, big A, double A, like, it's going to just be one team, so you only have to pay 10 to 12 players. So, like, they're going to get paid, like, a decently sized sum, I think. And they'll yeah. probably do like things where like, you know, if you sign with our G League team, our NBA team can technically give you a bonus. But I think it'll be 
like it's going to slowly be bigger and bigger where like we're going to start seeing i don't know maybe 20 to 30 good college players go to the yeah. g league and then we already see one or two every year instead of going to college they go overseas the, i don't know if you know the the company overtime they all they're on instagram a lot like they i don't even know honestly didn't know they had this money but they're starting their own league and they're paying kids 100k a year and yeah. You can like they're doing like you get an internship with overtime, you get paid a hundred K, and then they're gonna have a basketball league, which is absurd. And like cause overtime is like really big social media wise. So like you'll build your social media like crazy. So like it's like a no brainer for some people where it's like I can get paid. And then the, supposedly like if you don't make it in the NBA, they will they have a scholarship set up for you to go back to school if you want to go to school and get your degree. So like to your point, I think in six to ten years especially if they continue to hold off on letting athletes make money off of their name, mm -hmm. we're going to have, it's just going to be four year players and like, which will be good, which I don't know, maybe to a point it'll be better because people will mean more to schools and mm -hmm. you'll see that like, you'll have more of the college aspect to it instead of these one and one and I done guys. Or back in the day type of deal where they yeah. like, Oh, but I, I, people say I'm crazy, but I think that's a valid point. But I think, what you just said to me, I, the only way the NCAA is going to be able to compete with the G League for basketball, got to start paying these kids. Yeah. I back that 100%. I mean, if uh, NCAA on sales alone, they can pay a uh, minimum wage in season for a kid in, through Division One and three on sales alone. Right. And insane, absolutely insane. I mean, it's just NCAA is just – they got to adapt. See, what, what I think could happen too is like – I think you we might see like the NCAA might be broken in five to six years. Like I think I think big time colleges and I think all the small schools will follow. Like I think we might see like a they start their own leagues and then it's just like kind of like a free for all. Players can get paid if they want to. If Alabama wants to play a football player, they can pay a football player. If Duke wants to play a basketball player, they can pay a basketball player. Everyone just does what they want. And you know what? We're going to play basketball, especially because, like, you know what? If all these kids do go play in the G League, do go play for these other leagues, like, I guarantee the whole pay for player won't be as huge, too, because those are guys who you're normally paying. So if they're gone, like, you can, like, they're still going to give money to these kids, but it's not going to be these outrageous, like, you know, you bought Zion Williamson a $500,000 home to get him to come to Duke. Like, it's just going to be, you know, like, you got paid 20 grand throughout the year so you could afford whatever you needed to afford. I think you have a good point too. Like this is just a start. What if I, I think football will say the same, no matter what, there's a difference between an 18 year old and a 25 minute or 25 year old semi truck in the NFL, but you're going to see all do this soccer, and you name it, dude, like whatever, it's just going to be different. And they just got to starting with the, um, the paying players, eight, uh, team playoff in the, uh, college football. I don't know if you're a big believer in that, but eight yeah. team playoff, something fresh, something new. Adapt to the changes. NCAA are just these guys. They think the old system's going to work. They're probably grumpy. They probably wake up and hate their lives every day. But they just got to change, adapt. It's the world. I mean, world's changing what we are right now. But I, I think I, I'm right. I think to your point too. The what college football has going for them that will probably always have going for them is that the NFL does not let you enter the draft until a certain age, and there's no minor league teams. Yeah. Like the XFL yeah. came out for one year, and only one guy did it. You know, yeah. so like it's it's probably not more beneficial to go do that route anyways. And the NFL backs college football because they don't want guys like you said they do not want guys coming in at 19 years old. There's maybe a handful of people on one hand uh, you can count on one hand probably who could probably go when they're right out of high school like maybe like i, I, I no i i i would probably say no one and even so, derrick henry would get squashed like a bug but that's my point so like the nfl is backing all that so that's the only like college football has that whereas like every so it's like a simple fix let them make money and then you don't then college football is not touched at all and if nothing changes you don't have to worry about anything. They're all going to go to college. They're not going to mm -hmm. go like, so it's not going to, you know, water down the college league. Nothing's going to happen like that. College yeah. basketball, baseball, all that that happens is there's so much money being thrown around left and right. You know, these baseball, especially soccer, baseball teams, they want them in their farm systems early. Yeah. They want them to develop and they want them to be 18 and develop in their league. So like, that's, that's a battle. 
I think another point, if you start paying players, I mean, if you're coming in a low-income income family and all you knew was just sort of like, how am I going to get my next buck is, I think you're going to find, if you start paying these kids, you're going to find out like scandals or uh, selling rings or jerseys or trying to make their own profit. That's going to go way down, you know, give them some money. Like all they know is like, they're coming in here. They might not have any money at all. And now that you're getting thrown into college and books mm-hmm. are expensive, uh, you want to go take a girl on a date or you want to get food. I honestly, I understand they get meals and all that, but how far does it go? You want to be a, a college student plus an athlete? Like, I think you'll just see a, a whole 180 turn if they start getting some money. Like, just you got to do it. You just got to do it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they're starting to like, you know, the college football games coming back and like all these schools, which I don't necessarily disagree with. Like, I want to play the game, but they're just like, dude, we're not going to be, you can't put our team in the game unless you pay these people. You know yeah. how simple of a fix that is? You know how every player who's in 2K gets a check? How yeah. EA Sports could do that? And that's it, such a simple fix. Take one national championship. How much money do you think they bring in? Yeah. I pay every kid in Division One any sport in minimum wage, you know? That's what I'm saying. Like, it's just like – it's just such a simple fix. Like, you know, I just – it's so stupid. It's so stupid. But last thing we're going to talk about today – a uh, NCAA college player. It was frustrating, dude. Twenty five bucks then was hundred bucks. You find out ways of what you can spend on. You, know, you can. It's just. Uh, it just sucks, dude. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. It definitely does. Like it's it's tough for sure. But final thing I want to talk about. Colin Coward. I don't know if you saw this, but so Baker Mayfield. Did you see his tweet last night where he saw the UFOs? Yeah. Okay. Funny tweet. Whatever. Who knows? Could be real. Could be not. Who really cares? Colin Coward hates Baker Mayfield. I'm a big Colin Coward fan, so you don't have to give me any backstories, brother. Okay, okay. So Colin Coward today said, Joe Montana, Troy Aikman, Terry Bradshaw, and Tom Brady have never seen aliens. I would prefer my guys to not talk about it. Dude. Do, you, do you think he – so, like, last night I saw so many people respond, like, oh, my word, Colin Coward is going to have so much fun with this tomorrow. Do you think he saw all that and he was just like, I got to do it? Yeah, I, I don't know. Colin Collard is let's let's be honest. He's a professional troller. Yes. And the guy, one I follow in football. I think he's absolutely a genius. But it's just kind of like a like a side gig. It's, it's, it's his uh, Batman and Joker. He loves poking fun. And ba- when Baker came on and tried to big league him and saying that obviously Colin was doing his job and he's got blow it out proportion. But it's just a great rival. It gets too much on the show. I don't know how much you listen to, but. I love it. I absolutely love that Colin dogs him, and then also Baker dogs him too. Yeah. No. Yeah. I. I like. I read it probably like five times. I listened to it a bunch. I was like, okay, yeah. Like, I think he's just trolling everyone. Like everyone was making fun of him. I think he's just trolling everyone. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's pretty funny, man. It's just hilarious. It is funny because I do I do like listening to Colin Coward a bunch, honestly. Yeah. It's uh. Non football season's tough for me because I think his bread butter's football season. I mean, yeah, I don't listen, but he got that blood clot for he, after the Super Bowl. That was wild. And I'm happy he's back. So, yeah, I do agree though. Football season is definitely his time to shine. Real quick, I don't know how much time we got, but uh, are you re- are you rearing up for the baseball season? I mean, I could see when they let fans in having a cold Budweiser in the stands, brother. Like, I will say, if they do let people in the stands, I will go to a game. Absolutely, I will, I will definitely go to a game. I, I, I wasn't a huge person. Like, so I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe I just went to too many games growing up. But I came to like kind of hate going into games. Mm-hmm. I think with the pandemic, like it kind of like brought me back a little like, damn, I want to go to some games, but I will say, I think I want to go to baseball games. Like baseball is the one sport that I enjoy going and sitting there drinking beer. I don't, I like watching football games, like on TVs. I don't know why I just do. I have baseball games and hockey games. Like I would rather go there, drink beer. Hockey kind of sucks though. Cause like, dude, it's like, you're so squeezed in. Like I'd rather go to the ballpark, have a beer, have a dog. We should go. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, like, I think you're right. I mean, once this is all, hopefully soon, I miss just being around people. I mean, when you're in a stadium and everyone's just happy, it's just – that's what I miss so much. I'm just so excited, dude. And it's just uh, – man, I'm praying every day we get we get through this. Yeah, they're, they're starting to slowly let people go in. I saw something that the Chicago mayor is going to let a certain amount of people in. So, I, I would – 
you know, it would be we should go to a Cubs and a Sox game and just rate every single thing, rate each person. The beer at both places, peanuts at both places, hot dogs at both places. I mean, shit, just bring the whole fan experience. We should do a live uh, live Instagram live for all your followers or Twitter, whatever you, we do today. Uh, rate it, dude. That'd be awesome. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in Chicago. And the Sox are good, man. The Sox are, are good. Gary team that's going to be looking out there electric Tim Anderson I, I hope he throws a bat into the ground this year that's awesome but um like I said I don't know how much time here I had a blast on this podcast I hope I'm oh, gonna... we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring you back uh you know Olena's been pretty busy he's been moving and stuff lately so like let's just try to run this every week we can talk about whatever yo it's pretty simple man uh, I didn't know what time it is how long we've we been on this right now we've been on this for like an hour Absolutely. I had a great time, dude. Is there, uh, I just want to give a big shout out to you, man. And awesome for giving me the call. And I would love to do it again. And uh, mom, I love you. I was going to say, but uh, all right. Every, really, yeah. Yeah. Every, gonna, all over your lap. Yep. Appreciate it. Well, we'll see you guys next week. School is going to be back on next week. Appreciate you coming on. See you, buddy.